Today, I want to talk about the steps I go through in making a hollow form. Hi, I'm Trent Bosch. Today I want to talk a little bit about the steps I go through in making a hollow farm. They're pretty basic, simple steps, but they're something that I always keep in my mind whenever I'm making a hollow farm. Whether it's out of face grain or end grain, whether it's tall, whether it's short and squat and large in diameter, uh, I still use these very similar steps. So I have a little illustration here that's gonna just kind of give you an idea of those steps I do, it just in kind of a standard hollow form. Um, the first thing that's important to remember is that we leave a little bit of extra material in the bottom of our form for support of the hollowing process. So once we've got our shape and everything taken care of in our form, we're gonna go through these six, and there's actually a seven steps that I really pay attention to. The first one is I'm gonna go ahead and create a little V that guides a drill bit down the center of my piece and gives me an idea of the depth that I'm planning on going. So once I get that depth sort of established, that makes the rest of the steps a little bit easier because I can just follow along on those. So after I've done that step number one, I'm gonna do step number two and I'm gonna use my straight hollowing tool and I'm gonna go ahead and I'm just gonna work my way down here. I wanna elaborate though that uh, I want to let you know that these steps aren't just one big swoop. There's lots of little steps within each one of these steps that, that combine to get rid of that area that I'm working in. So with, with step number two, I'm using my straight tool to just kind of go back and forth, open that hole up a little bit larger, and go down to about that same depth that I went with my um, drill bit. Um, and then three and four are also I'm going to be using that straight hollowing tool. Uh, I go in there first to get three kind of cleaned out a little bit and that again it kind of clears a path for me to work in four so why do I do three and four kind of in two separate steps well three comes out to the larger diameter and lets me kind of know where I'm working uh, in that larger diameter and then four reminds me that I need to come back down to about that same area I was with number two and uh, it, so I don't end up going straight across and making it a little bit uh, thinner in an area that I don't want it to be thin in. And then I switch to my bent hollowing tools for steps five and six. And I, again, come around that shoulder, clear out the large area. And then all with six, it reminds me that I need to come back down to that same little area down there that I was with two. So two, four, and six all end up in that same exact spot down there, allowing me to um, hopefully not get too thin in an area down around this corner because this is where a lot of people fail in a hollow form is down around that bottom that bottom shoulder and and consciously thinking about that and coming back around really helps out and makes your your uh um, chance for going through that hollow form a lot less. There's one last step that I go through, which is to take a, a radius scraper and kind of just take a very light cut all the way through that form, just kind of clearing out the inside surface of any small humps, bumps, and ridges. And that radius scraper is a little bit larger cutter than the rest of the tools I hollow with uh, that allows me to smooth out that surface a little bit more. Remember, we can't really see inside that hollow form when we're hollowing it out but we sure can kind of pay attention to these steps so that we go through them in an order that's going to uh, give us enough support for what we're doing, as well as hopefully not allow us to get too thin in some areas. I hope that those steps for hollowing helped you kind of understand the steps that I go through when making a hollow form. This little chart that I have, um, we have a link to it in the, uh, area below so you can access a PDF and print your own out. In my shop where I teach, I usually uh, post these in every space where we have students so they can reference it often. So I hope that helps. Feel free to like, subscribe, and definitely print out that PDF so you can reference it in a later point. Thanks for watching.